Okay. Today, the title of our message is this. The book of proof is a higher and richer than the Bible. Amen? The book of truth is higher and richer than the Bible. But to be honest with you, I will try to preach it or to demonstrate it from the Bible because everybody wants things to be demonstrated from the Bible. But actually things should be demonstrated uh, for what? From the Spirit. Amen? And those who have the Spirit catch it. Hallelujah? Yeah, this is how it's supposed to be. That's why Jesus always said people, for those who have the Spirit, let them get it. Amen? Now go and read it somewhere. The book of truth. Let's go. Daniel 10. You man, so greatly loved, don't be afraid. Shalom to you. And be strong. Yes, truly strong. He's speaking to me, strengthen me. And I said, my Lord, keep speaking because you've given me strength. Then he said, do, not, do you know why I came to you? Although now I must return to fight the prince of Persia. And when I leave, the prince of Greece will come. Nevertheless, I will tell you what is written in the book of truth. Amen? What is written in the book of truth? There is no one standing with me against them except Michael, your prince. Okay. I took this from the complete Jewish Bible because the complete Jewish Bible translates the Jewish translate better the old Old Testament than anybody because the Old Testament is, is written in Hebrew. Amen? Okay, but now we're talking about the book of truth. But when you check Daniel chapter 11, let me read some few verses from Daniel chapter 11. Because the Bible was written in just in books. In theologians, at some point, say, let's make a codification. So they put it, they separate it into chapters and verses. So we can have a better referenciation about what is written. If not, it's a book. It's like you, you yourself, you don't want to write a letter right now. You don't say chapter 1, verse 1, verse 2. You don't say that. Amen? Okay. So, te, uh, now I'm reading chapter uh, 11 in this, in NLT. It says, now then, I will reveal the truth to you. The Three more Persian kings will reign to be succeeded by a fourth, far richer than the other. He will use his wealth to stir up everyone to fight against the kingdom of Greece. Amen? Against the kingdom of Greece. Then a mighty king will rise to the power. But when you see what's Gabriel is saying here, you can understand that from the, uh, Gabriel is saying to Daniel here, you can understand that he's talking about things who will happen over centuries. Okay? But now what is the book of truth? The book of truth is the book where everything God has planned already is seed. Amen? If you remember, who is Gabriel? Gabriel is the one who keeps who keeps the book of truth? Who announced every chapter of the book of truth? If you remember when God walked the earth, he said in that, is the, when the, God is about to open a new dispensation or do anything new, Gabriel will always come. Gabriel does not come like that. When he comes, he should tell that new, new chapter is coming. Okay? Gabriel is the one who announced to Mary. Amen? So, so anytime Gabriel appears, know that there is something new God is going to do. But those things new, there are things new that God is still doing today, but they are, not, they are not written in the Bible. That's why I say the book of truth is higher and richer than 
the Bible. Okay. The book of truth is the scripture that is written in heaven. It contains all that God plans for us, for humanity. That's the book of truth. Amen? Because the truth is how things should be. How God plans everything, that's the truth. Amen? Hallelujah? Ecclesiastes. Amen? Ecclesiastes 6, verse 10 to 12. He said, everything has already been decided. It was not long ago what each person should, would be. Not will be, eh? Will be, according to your calling. Okay? So, there is no use arguing with God about your destiny. He plans it already. But all God have, he said to Jeremiah, before you were born, I appointed you as a prophet to the nation. Amen? He equipped your spirits to become a prophet to the nation. But when you grow up, you learn his law, you abide by his law, and you do, then he can say, that now you are a vessel that is good for him to use. Then he will choose you. That's what I said, the chosen one. To use you for the very purpose he planned for you. Amen? Verse 11 say, The more word you speak, the less they mean. So what good are they? Amen? What good are they? <laughs> Verse 12, I love it. He said, in, if in, the, in the few days of our meaningless life, our meaningless life, until your life is matching, the life you are living is matching what is in the book of truth. It's meaningless. So you can understand what Solomon is saying, meaningless of meaningless. Whenever it's not, whatever is not God, it's not in the plan of God, it moves. It moves not heaven. It will leave no legacy on earth. Today we are chasing money. There are people who live on this earth. They were far richer than what? Paul. But Paul left a legacy. But what is their name? You don't even know. I don't even know that they live. They live on earth. Amen? So who knows how our days can, be, can best be spent? Our lives are like a shadow. Who can tell what will happen on this earth after we are gone? The graveyard can tell. Even when you look at the book of Daniel, it says, at the end, seal this. It didn't write, seal this. It will happen at the end. At the end. How many thousand years? Written already. That's the book of truth. And all these are written that, that are written in the book of truth are not in the Bible. So my invitation or God's invitation for us is to grow to the point that we can have access to heaven. When we have access to heaven, because we are in the church age, but now we are God is moving the, us out of the church age to enter the kingdom age. Where you are on earth, but your spirit is before the throne. And what you say you see there. Is what you announce here. What you see there is what you announce there. Because what you see is what is written there. Is what has been planned. But let me tell you there. There, there's no book like this. The books are movie books. They are movies. They are no, we call it scripture, scripture, scripture. No, 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 no. They are movie. Amen? So we need to understand this. When you understand that, you see, let me tell you this. We have Bible scholars, they master the Bible. But what have they changed on this earth? Amen? But when you know your God, and you are one with your God, and you are living by what is written by your God, Amen? John 5, 46, um, 46 to 47. If, Jesus said something. He said, if you really believe Moses, 
you would believe me because he wrote about me. But since you don't believe what he wrote, how will you believe what I say? Amen? I just want to tell you that Jesus did not preach from the Old Testament, but from the book of truth. Amen? That's why he always say, I tell you the truth. He said, I tell you the truth. He preached from the book of truth, not from the Old Testament. But now there are things that are in the Old Testament that are part of the book of truth. Then when he said the people say, ah, yes, it's there. Hallelujah. He preached from the book of truth. And when you understand this, you know that, but without this Bible, which is the introduction to the truth, you cannot get there. So anybody wants to take pride to say, Father, me, I don't want the Bible. I want the book of truth. You are lying to yourself. Amen? So before he was arrested, Jesus was arrested to be crucified. This was what he said. Luke 20, 22, verse 47. He said, for the time has come for this prophecy about me to be fulfilled. For this prophecy to be fulfilled. But look at what he said after that. He said, he was counted amongst the rebels. Yes, everything written about me by the prophet will come true. That means this very one, the crucifixion, must be fulfilled. But there are others that are not fulfilled yet. But at that time, he was leaving the earth. He was going. So we need to understand. Because, you know, let me tell you this truth. Every time I preach, I can feel in my spirit, God deposits there that there is something in heaven. That, I don't know the name of it. But I just say the scripture is not the Bible, but this. But now it revealed to me is the book of truth. Okay? Because what is it is that in the prophetic, God will put things in your spirit. You know. But you are the one who should find the word to communicate it to people. To communicate it. Amen? So, it is important that we know that this thing do exist. is true. But the problem is that when I said it, if I don't prove it in the Bible, the way our mentality has been programmed today, nobody will believe it. Nobody will believe it. But I'm telling you, the book of truth, higher, richer than the Bible. And now, Part of the book of truth is the one, the books, always they will take. Like Isaiah, he put something in his mouth, he ate. And he said what? I put what? My word in your mouth. Not the Bible in your mouth, or uh, Deuteronomy in your mouth, or whatever, Leviticus. I put my word in your mouth. Hallelujah. Let's go. So the book of truth, we understand it clearly, is a plan of God from the beginning to the end. No, 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 no. I'm making a mistake. From the beginning to eternity, because there's no end. That's the book of truth. Amen? But now, as it has given us the free will, everybody needs to seek God, love God, to enter his destiny line. That will be the part of the book of truth that is written upon your life. That's why in the book of truth, when we have a dream, you see something happens. When you come next day, you come and pray for the person. Or you see something happen before the thing happens. I tell you the book of truth is in the movie. So you saw part of the movie before it comes to manifestation. That is the book of truth. And we have entered the dispensation when we need to catch the book of truth. Catch whatever is written about our life. That's what Jesus said. I do nothing until I see my father do it. So whatever you see from the book of truth is what you do. Okay? Let's say right now. Forget about Jesus. Even you right now. You may have a dream that something is about to happen. Somebody else will have it as well. Who will see the same thing as well. It's the same book. It's a, you never tell the person, but the person sees as well. Amen? So we need to understand very well. You see, 
God said he has hidden what? The last, the best wine for the last. Amen? Amen? For the last days. So, we need to understand. As we understand, let's go to Revelation. Revelation, Jesus left a long time ago. It's about the 90s, 90 years after Jesus, okay? Between 90 and 100 years, okay? AD. Then, John received the revelation. And John said what? Revelation 2, verse 17. He said, anyone with the ear to hear my listen to the Spirit and understand what it's saying to the churches. To everyone who is victorious, I will give some of the hidden manna that are hidden away in heaven. That means Jesus is not released everything. Amen? And even last time I showed you in the book of Revelation that there are certain things the seven thunders spoke. But those things are not written in the Bible. Even the, the angel told God, uh, the, the John, don't write it down. But it's going to happen. How do you get it? You need to love God enough. Say, God, hey, let me continue where John finished. Amen? And you go, you hear it. Amen? He said, and I will give to each one a white stone and on a stone will be engraved a new name that no one understand except the one who receive it. Let me tell you this. The new name when you receive it, the new name communicates to you immediately your divine mission. Amen? Your divine mission. If you check it very well, when you look at the meanings of people's name in the Bible, the meaning says something about the mission. Do you know that David means love? David means love, okay? Because when I'm here, Google, I discover it is a me. David means a me. So when they say the man after the heart of God, the God. God loves. Okay? When you look at the name like uh, Lot, that means vil, vil. So because Lot was with Abraham, Abraham could have not seen the promised land. Amen? So, it's important. Amen? But now let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. I don't want anybody to take this and make a new, a new doctrine. The name God gives you is what matters, not the name human being gives you. Because some people say that with, what, with your name, if the name means something, it will go into, that's a, a wrong, it's a doctrine. It's not true. Abednego, Shadrach, Meshach, they were named after what? The Babylonian God, Bestie. Daniel performed what God wants him to perform. Achieve what God wants him to achieve. So how God calls you is what matters, not how people call you. I mean, if somebody can give you a bad name right now, eh? it doesn't mean that God will not use you. Amen? So if God give you, a, a, your parents give you a name, if you are happy with it, that's fine. Okay, if you are not happy, there is something called Afi David. Amen? You can change your name and change your passport. Hallelujah? So here it's clear that all the last day messengers have to listen to each other. Because he said very well in Revelation 2, 7, he said, everyone who is victorious, I will give some of the hidden manna, not all the hidden manna. Some. As he says some, that means you receive some. You check, who is the last the messenger as well there? What did he receive? What did he receive? What did he receive? But if you cannot humble yourself, you fall into what we call self-righteousness. Whatever you receive, that's it. Nobody can see anything else. But you don't know. God is God. I don't know if you get it. God is God because, you know, let me tell you, head of state, they are doing something, a project, like, let's say, the prime minister here. 
The project they are doing in Manchester is different from the one they are doing in Bristol. So, you don't say, because this church is doing this, they may be popular. But God doesn't want to do that here. Amen? So, we will fall into self righteousness. But I want to do something this morning. We are preaching about the book of truth. Amen? And the book of truth, <laughs> Hallelujah, John says something here, yeah? He said what? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Amen? He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made, okay? In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shined in the darkness. And the darkness did not comprehend it, the light. That means the light is what? Revelation. Revelation. But the darkness, as our brain is so dark, we, can, we couldn't get it. He, and there was a man. But why at the beginning they said there was a word? Amen? They said that at the beginning was the word. But here they say there was, a, uh, there was a man sent from God. So John the Baptist was a man. But this one was not a man. Hallelujah? John the Baptist was a man whose name was John. But the word was not a man. Amen? But you know, I say, this man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. Now, let's go, we are going to discover something. They say, there was a word, okay? But now, in him was what life. And in the light was what light. So that means, the light is nothing compared to life, and life is nothing compared to, or let's say, light is less than life, and life is less than word. You don't get it? Because in the word, okay, in him who was the word, there was life. That means it's not just life that was in the word. There are more than life. Amen? But now in life, there is light. So in life, there is more than light. Okay, let's put it this way. In UK, we have London. And in London, we have Pimico. Hallelujah. That's why I'm telling that what Jesus came and did on earth, even what the Bible failed to record, is nothing compared to who that guy is. It's nothing compared. If you, you say, those who know their God, if you discover who he is, Maya, Kasa, Kataraba. Amen? It's nothing compared. So when they are talking about light, and even look at this, look at this. He said, I am the light of the world. He said, you are the light of the world. You compare yourself. That means uh, on earth, he put himself. The, what the provision he has for you to have is what is displayed on earth. What he, 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 he allowed or he portion for human beings to manifest is what he came to manifest. That's why I say, those who believe will do what he did and do some greater. Hallelujah. But let me tell you, how many human beings can create galaxy? Can you? Maribakoto. Amen? But now I want to like, amen? I want to make this sound heavenly. This one. I want to make it sound heavenly. Because when you talk about the word, the word, even when you see, you say God, in every word, what do you have? A word gives an identity. When I say chair, is a word. When I say clove, is a word. But I say God give me, give, but that, that word as well is a name. Okay? When you say a word, that word um, uh, take, make you identify something. Hallelujah? But now that's what word is a name as well. But now I say God give him a name that is higher than any other name. But now I want to demonstrate to you. You see this Bible. The Bible cannot 
make this remote. Hallelujah. But when you're in terms of way, they can say this Bible is heavier than this remote control. But now when they say God gives me Jesus, okay, who he is, out of him, this remote control can come out. Out of him, everything can come out. Therefore, he is higher than everything. Out of him, he can make everything. He just said that, bow, he gone. Even a new building, even a town can appear at a bound. And how the new Jerusalem is being, is being built right now. Every time when you are working here, according to what you do, building materials come out of the Father. And the angels will take it and build your house. But don't be surprised if at the end you have a house where there is no furniture inside because you didn't persevere. John received the revelation, but what he could have said is what he wrote. Because he said, Logos. Logos, that means a written word. Because even there, there's no written word. Amen? It's a movie word that is there. Hallelujah? But let's move to the next one. At the beginning was the truth. And the truth was with God. And the truth was God. Hallelujah? At the beginning was the truth. The truth was with God, and the truth was God. And he is the truth. How everything should be. Then his life was the truth. He come and manifest how his life should be. How can somebody be the truth and come and make a mistake? It's not possible. So he could have not seen. He couldn't. Because he is the truth. Amen? Hallelujah? But now, he was in the beginning with God. And all things were made through him. So everything was made according to his plan. According to that plan of the truth. That's why in Proverbs 25 verse 8, he said, I was the architect that designed everything that did everything. I was there before the mountain was created because I was there. I am the one. This is the truth. Hallelujah. He said, all things was made through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life. Amen. And the life was the light of man. And the light shine in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. He just came to show us there are things right now. To be honest, myself, I can say, but wisdom make me not to say it. Seriously, I couldn't say it. And he said to the disciple, you are not ready. I should have told you more, but you are not ready. He told them, isn't it? Say, you are not ready. That's the Jesus you are talking about. So when you talk about Jesus, sometimes I say, when I'm saying Jesus, is like I'm devaluing the guy. He's more than Jesus. I want to say that. Jesus is more than Jesus. The body he carries, that body is called Jesus. But what was inside? Mm. My, my brain even is too small. To talk about it. Amen? But now look at this. If Paul is saying this, okay, I don't really understand myself. For I was, I, I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. Amen? But if I know that what I am doing is wrong, this shows that I agree with the law of God. That means I agree with the truth. Amen? But now, verse 24 to 25 say, Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by my sinful, by, by sin and death? Thank God. The answer is in 
Jesus Christ our Lord. So, you see how it is. In my mind, I really want to obey God's law. But because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. Hallelujah. But while Paul was preaching, writing, he was honest and humble. He's saying it. He was honest and humble, saying it. But today, we want God to use us as powerful as Paul. But we are not humble and honest before people. Amen? So those who discover the truth and live by the truth are the one who are registered in the book of remembrance. Book of remembrance. I'm announcing another book. Book of remembrance. And you are going to get it right now. Those what? Who discover the truth. The way things should be. And abide by it. Jesus know what is the truth. He come and live by the truth because he was the truth himself. But now when you discover, like Paul said, I agree with the truth. If you agree with the truth and you are living by the truth, then your name will be written in the book of remembrance. And the book of the remembrance is purer than the Bible. Let me tell you what is in the book of the remembrance. Malachi 3, verse 16 to 17. He said, Malachi 3, 16 to 17. He said, then those who fear the Lord spoke to one another. And the Lord listened to, the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. That truth. Who meditate on his name. They shall be mine, said the Lord of hosts. On the day that I make them my jewels, yeah? And I will what? Spare them as a man spare his own son who serves him. So you can have son who does not serve you. But now what I want to talk about the book of remembrance, where they talk to each other, they say the truth. They meditate on the truth and they share the truth. Okay? Because in heaven, God does not record wrong. Look, if yourself you remember something wrong, it doesn't upset you. So you don't wonder. You don't wonder. That's why when I come right now to Hebrew, Hebrew 10, 16 to 17, say, this is the new covenant I will make with my people on that day, say the Lord. I will put my law, my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their mind. So if your mind and your heart are always made and meditate or full of the law of God, what will be your sin? No sin. Then, verse 17 say, then he said, I will never again remember their sins and lawless deeds. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says we have been saved. As we have been saved, so salvation is progressive. So you must push until you, re- you enter the book of remembrance. It's not everybody name that is the book of remembrance. Every Christian name might be in the book of what? Life. But it's not every Christian name that will be written in the book of remembrance. I'll just come back a little bit. We have millions of Christians who have lived on earth. Look at the token God is using to, for us to remember them, how they live and copy and learn from it. Hallelujah. How many live a legacy? So, to tell you that, the book of truth, when you discover that there's a book of truth, you push higher than what you can discover in the Bible. Amen? But you don't close your Bible and push. You push with the Bible opened. Amen? Those who will know Jesus as the truth and manifest the truth are the one who will do exploits with their God. Hallelujah. 
I'm telling you, people, there are people, even there is some, that one Nigerian man I heard about him. He knows the Bible to the point that they put his name on the uh, Guinness book. When you press his toe, I said, Jeremiah, ba, 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 so it's not those who know the Bible, it's those who know their God. Those who know their God, but that God is true, written in heaven. We must get out of the church. When I say church, it's not church. Uh, anyway, uh, get out of the church age and enter the kingdom. Oh, you remember the last day messenger, uh, Revelation 14. Uh, 14. He said, they will be accessing go heaven and coming back. They will be like choir. That means everybody will be singing different voice. But it will be harmonious. But it will be before the throne. Hallelujah. That Daniel, look at what Daniel said. Daniel said this in 32. Uh, I'm reading it in two versions. NLT say, he will flatter and win over those who have violated the covenant. But the people who know their God will be strong and will resist him. Talking about the Antichrist. Okay? But now, the same Daniel 11, 22, uh, 32 in N, uh, NKGV, New, uh, New King James, he said, those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flatteries. Amen? But the people who knows their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. Hallelujah. Carry out great exploits. So, brothers and sisters, if you are here this morning, I believe you must have hope. You must have joy. Unless you are not on the Lord's side. If you are on his side and you will never give up and you are an overcomer knowing that he's on your side you will do exploits. But let me tell you anything you want to do that is written in the book of truth nobody can oppose it. But what is not written in the book of truth the enemy can oppose it. Hallelujah. In the book of truth it was written that Moses should not go to hell, nor in Hades, but taken to heaven. When the devil come and want to discuss his body, when Michael appeared, he took the body away from him. Because it was not written that according to the life of Moses, Moses should have gone. Amen? Hallelujah? And the devil tried to <laughs> say Moses is a murderer. Because he remember he killed somebody in Egypt. Uh -huh. Because he said, you shall now murder. The other day he said murderer, you know. Hallelujah. Because when you walk with God, the life of God that God communicates to you washes away your sin. Like we look at it in Hebrew um, 12. Yes, I know 17, 16. Uh, yeah, 10, 17, 16. 16, 17. Amen? So, brothers and sisters, let me tell you this. We must be zealous. We are running away. We are in competition with the world. Actually, we should know God to the point that the world will come to us. Look at how Dan Daniel knew his God. And he was a reference. In the whole Babylon. Amen? So if you are struggling, or Christians are struggling, it's because they are not working according to the truth, but according to their own understanding of the Bible. Amen? According to their own understanding of the Bible. Amen? Let me give you this. Paul said in the Bible, let the one who's not, who, who doesn't work not to eat. You remember that? Okay, uh, uh, it was confirmed. 
He said that a man who eats from the brow of the soul. But Jesus came. And Jesus said, give to the one that is in need. So if the guy is not working, and he wants food, so do you say that you are not giving him food? You see, how is like a tradition? That when you are connected to the spirit, you know that this guy is lazy and God wants to teach him a lesson. Or this guy is not lazy, it's the circumstances that is making him like that, so you help him. But when you want to go by the Bible, you may just pick one and apply it, but it's the wrong one. It's the wrong one. The book of truth is the one the spirit dictates. It's the one the spirit talks about. It's higher than the Bible. That's why I say, God speaks beyond the Bible. Some pastor went on the internet and talked against it. But God is good. Hallelujah. But God used me to prophesy to that very pastor. And he took it in account today. But he didn't know. The lady he met me. He didn't know it's me. I didn't present myself. But I know. Well, as he spoke to me, the spirit to me, this is him. I said, okay. I went to pray. And I spoke to him. He changes his life. Hallelujah. So, brothers and sisters, you are here. I don't believe your life is a chance. Amen? I don't want to build any pride in you. But if God makes you to be here, it's because he counts on you. He loves you so much and he wants you to discover the truth. Amen? But you may discover the truth. And knowing the truth. But if you don't believe in it, you cannot apply it. Amen? There are some people who can preach, eh? But what the very thing they have, oh, I'm not going, I'm going far. What Paul was preaching, Paul see himself doing the opposite of what he's preaching. That means the thing was in his mind, but not in his heart yet. But when it is in your heart, you will apply, you will do it. They can try to corrupt you, say no, you will do it. But when it's your heart and your mind is free, is empty, so they sometimes you are not focused. You will not be focused. But when what is the word of God, the truth is in your heart. Fill your heart. And but now your your soul is facing your 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 spirit, getting the truth all the time. You'll be thinking about the things of the Lord, not the things of the flesh. The book of truth is higher and richer than the Bible. And the one who wrote the truth is the one who came and showed us how to live by the truth. Hallelujah. God bless you.